What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I got the stock turbo back on. I actually got to start it up and take the car for a little drive. I'm still on the stock tune. The boost is doing some weird things. It kind of jumps from like 10 straight to like 13 um, once you're at wide open throttle. But I think that has to do with the downpipe and the intake and all of the added flow that I am not restricting anymore. So I'm gonna try out some of the Cobb off the shelf tunes. I may do a custom tune. I'm hoping I can compare some data logs on virtual dyno or something like that. Um, but yeah, I got a lot to do today, so stay tuned. Before I get started messing with the tunes on the car, I need to get a couple of other things fixed first. So after I got the turbo on the car, I put my headlights back in and I'm getting an error message for the low beam. Um, it is the driver's side over here, but I will show you that here in just a second. And then the other thing I need to do is get some more coolant. After I drove the car, it ran it through the system and that stuff is definitely low. So I've got to run back up to the dealership and grab some more of that also. I'm gonna toggle this headlight first. So this is what's happening when I hit the ignition. Here's the code I get. I've already got the headlight removed. It's just the two bolts. So here's what it is. You can see that this is my low beam over here. It's not on. And on the passenger side, you can see that this one is on. These are aftermarket headlights and sometimes they are prone to issues, but I'm hoping that it's just the bulb. So what I'm gonna do is just take the bulb out of this one and then I'll take the low beam bulb out of this one and then put it in here and just see if it actually works. So like I said, these are aftermarket headlights and apparently they decided to use the exact same bulbs for the high beams and the low beams. Um, so it's these H7 and they are halogen. I tried swapping the high beam into the low beam, but it still didn't work. So I'm gonna have to brainstorm a little bit and I will get back to you. After a few minutes of fiddling around and just kind of poking around inside of here, I decided to give these wires over here just a little tug just to see if the connections were good. My black wire is perfect, but my blue wire as I started pulling on it, I noticed that it just kept coming and sure enough, you can see right over here to this side, it is not connected up. So I think this goes right into the back of this plug right here that goes to the wire harness on the car. I compared this plug to the passenger side headlight, so the pin should go right here. I'm not really sure how to go about reconnecting this. I'm hoping that this thing pops out of here somehow. Removing this thing is actually pretty easy. I thought that it popped out, but it actually goes in. So what you have to do is just take a flathead screwdriver on either side and just push those little side clips in. And then this thing will actually push in towards the headlight and then you can pull it out from this hole right here. I've got the headlight back in here, so my harness is still kind of just hanging out and plugged in. I wanted to make sure everything was working fine before I put it all back together, but my low beam is working perfect now, so I am going to put these bulbs back in here just in case I am driving, but I did go ahead and get on Amazon, and I ordered some new bulbs. I just hate this yellow color, so they're nothing special. They're not HIDs or anything like that, um, but it will be white or like a blue color. My visitors. Jagger. Hi. Hi. I'm gonna get this headlight put back together and then back in the car and then I'm gonna call it quits for the day and then tomorrow I will run to the dealership and grab some more coolant. I just got back from the dealership and crazy enough in one of my last videos I mentioned that the Focus ST takes this orange coolant. And so the last time that I did the big turbo swap on this thing, 
I had to go up to the dealership. I couldn't find this anywhere. I had to go up to the Ford dealership to get this. And so I ran up there again, and this time they told me that the orange is discontinued and it's replaced by the yellow. When I got home, I actually did look it up online and there is a backwards compatibility chart for this coolant. So the yellow does completely replace the orange. You can actually drain the entire system and replace it with the yellow, or they can be mixed and you can just top it off with the yellow. Uh, I did get the concentrated version. They didn't have a pre-diluted version when I went up there. So I am going to get some water together and then mix it up and then get this in here. My coolant is topped off. I've got my headlight working, so I'm gonna try to get this thing running a little bit better. I'm really hoping that one of the off-the-shelf tunes will have this thing running really good. The stock tune, like I said, is definitely weird right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it back out with the stock tune. I'm gonna try to get a couple of good data logs, and then I'll switch over to the stage one, stage two, stage three, just kind of see how all of those run with the bolt-ons. I'm gonna try to run data logs for each one and compare them, and then, like I said, hopefully one of these will work. For all of the Cobb stage tunes, they have a 91 octane and a 93 octane. So I am running the 93 octane, so I'll be running the 93 octane on all of the stage one, stage two, and the stage three. I'm probably just gonna drive over to a buddy's house and do a couple of back road pulls, and then I'll switch tunes over there, and then come back and just kind of do it back and forth. My plan is to not spend all day on this, so I'm gonna just do one run on each tune. I'm gonna try to film the access port when I do each pull, and then I'll either have the GoPro facing me or facing the road or something. Um, and then I'm going to come back and then try to compare each data log on virtual dyno. It's funny how going back to the stock turbo, just normal driving feels like it all, it all feels the same. It's that wide open throttle that's, that makes the big difference. I'm going to get ready to do just the OEM Stage Zero Stock 2. I just finished up with the stage zero tune so I could hear the turbo flutter when I first hit wide open throttle and then once you know the boost was all the way up um, it felt pretty smooth from there but I, I just pulled up with this gas station I switched to the stage one tune I'm gonna go try that one out already the stage one even just at like the lower speeds it feels it feels better like it actually feels like it has a little bit more pickup but let me do a little data log here so much better after experiencing what just the big turbo does i mean i am not with the, just the stage one tune this, i wasn't able to watch the access port the first time because i was trying to film the access port and i realized i mean it, it took this thing all the way to 22 pounds of boost i mean that's what i was running on my big turbo and to be honest with you i didn't really feel a whole lot of difference now again maybe that's this turbo is probably maxed out there but that's impressive though that's impressive out of that little stock turbo on just the stage one I'm really curious to see what the uh, stage three is going to do. I'm switching to the stage two tune now. I'm at my buddy's house, so we'll see how this thing goes. Stage two tune. Sorry, I forgot to film the access port on that pole. I am not used to working all of these cameras. Here we go. Stage three. If you guys saw, I did the stage three for emissions testing. That is a map that I built on there. It's this exact same thing as the stage three Cobb tune, but it has the O2 sensors turned on. Um, I have the defouler, so I don't have to worry about that. I hope this thing starts back up. This took a while. All right, stage three. should there may be a little bit of camera work that looks blotchy but for the most part i should be able to compare everything when i get home i haven't used this thing in a while i hope it opens up my ancient laptop would not load the new version of virtual dyno so i had to use my work laptop but i don't know if this is focus st specific or if this is across the whole cop platform but whenever i try to load a data log onto virtual dyno it always gives me an error message and it's saying that there is a column missing for throttle position so right here where it says TP absolute, 
this other column right here, AB, usually says TP relative. So what I have to do is change each of these columns to throttle position instead of it being abbreviated as TP. So right here, like this one, it says throttle position relative, and then you have to put a percentage sign in parentheses at the end of each one. I've got all of the virtual dyno results for each stage on the car. Full disclosure, I did actually have to go back out and redo the stage two and stage three. I did not run the RPMs high enough and Virtual Dyno will not accept it if you don't run them high enough. I don't want to make this part of the video extremely long, but right here you can see is my stage one, here's my stage two, stage three, and then I did do one of my data logs for the big turbo. I did have to change the temperature down here because it was a different part of the year. But here's the results down here. So stage one, I got 235 horsepower, 295 torque. Stage two, 233 horsepower, 308 torque. Stage three, 249 horsepower, 308 torque. And then here is my big turbo results at 308 horsepower and 319 foot pounds. It looks like I actually lost a couple of horsepower on the stage two, but you know, like I said, this is virtual dyno and the results can vary, but it looks like there was a pretty big increase in torque. And then when you come down here to the stage three, the torque didn't change, but the horsepower did. My stage three is definitely gonna give me the most horsepower and the most torque. I'm sure I could get these horsepower numbers up a little bit if I had a custom tune, but the car feels great, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Now that I've got a good tune on the car, I did not put everything back on in case I had any problems with the turbo, but I know everything is good now, so I still gotta put back on this front cowling under the hood, the windshield wipers, these little plates, and then these splash guards. The ST is all back together. It's not the big turbo that it used to be, but stock turbo, full bolt on. It's got a great little tune. It really does run great. So I've got some new bulbs ordered for the headlights. I've also got some other lights ordered. I'll show you that in the next video, but I hope you liked the video. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel and I will catch you guys next time. <laughs>